There are so many colorful foods and drinks out there, and kids are often eager to taste them all. Artificial food dyes can be hard to avoid with how often they are used in foods and beverages, but should they be avoided? Concerns have been raised specifically about red dye. Is red dye consumption really something to worry about? Have you heard some of the circulating concerns that it can cause ADHD or other behavioral changes? What about that it can cause cancer? Can you be allergic to it? Today, we'll separate fact from fiction and dispel other myths surrounding red dye. I am Dr. Mona, a pediatrician and mom. I help empower parents with easy to understand information so you can make the best choices for your family. Make sure to like this video and subscribe here to Pete's Doc Talk TV to stay up to date on the latest videos and new content. The concerns circulating red dye are typically related to red dye 40, a commonly used synthetic food dye that is made from Red dye 40 is one of the nine certified color additives approved by the FDA to be used in foods and beverages. Color additives are used to add color to foods and are often preferred to natural dyes due to their low cost, stability over time, and consistent color. When looking for red dye on a food label, it's helpful to know the other names it may be listed as. These include Red 40, Red 40 Lake, FDNC Red Number 40, FDNC Red Number 40 Aluminum Lake, Allura Red AC, CI Food Red 17, INS Number 129, and E129. It's one of the most widely used color additives and can be found in flavored milk, yogurt, ice cream, popsicle, chips, cakes, pastries, candies, breakfast cereals and bars, jello, fruit snacks, soda, and sports drinks. Yes, a lot of things kids can love. There has been lots of concern circulating that red dye can cause ADHD or worsen ADHD symptoms. ADHD is a neurodevelopmental condition that can present with trouble focusing, fidgeting, impulsivity, and or forgetfulness. There is a strong genetic predisposition and it cannot be caused by something you eat. ADHD is how our brain works and foods don't cause ADHD to begin with. There have been some studies that show that certain individuals with ADHD already can be more sensitive to red dye and consumption of red dye can increase their hyperactivity symptoms. These studies show that their increase in symptoms after consumption was mild but still statistically significant. Other studies have shown no correlation between consumption and symptoms, so the evidence is inconsistent. In comparison, there have been many, many studies that show that medications, specifically stimulants, and most importantly, behavior therapy are very effective at reducing symptoms of ADHD. When we have conflicting research, some studies say that it can exacerbate ADHD symptoms and some say there is no effect. I think it's really important to speak to your child's ADHD expert and look at your child and what you feel as a parent. Does your child need foods with red dye? No, nobody needs food with red dye. But if your child tolerates these foods in moderation and you are not seeing any change in behavior, then you as a parent can make a decision to proceed with the information you see for your child. Most kids can consume foods with red dye and not be affected. But if you notice your child who has ADHD is consistently more hyperactive after consuming foods with red dye, it may be beneficial to try having them avoid red food dye consumption and monitor for symptom improvement. This difference amongst kids and how they respond to these dyes and foods may be even genetic. The genetic differences between kids sensitive to food dyes and those not sensitive to food dyes is shown in an excellent 2010 study by Dr. Stevenson and his colleagues from the University of Southampton. So just like us as adults, it can be possible that we see variations in how we respond to some foods we eat, but no blanket statements for everyone.
I will say that many times these foods with the red dye can be presented in exciting, high stimulation moments such as at school or birthday parties. So it's hard to say, is it the food or is it the nature of when we're presenting the food, like a party that is very exciting and can cause any child with ADHD or not to become more hyper. What about allergies? Can you be allergic to red dye? And if so, what would a reaction look like? Allergic reactions have been reported to both synthetic and natural food colors. If an allergy occurs, reactions tend to be rare, mild, and mainly involve the skin, so presenting with something like hives. Sometimes it can be confusing if you're allergic to the dye or something else, since food dye is often in foods that have other additives or components as well. So if you are consistently breaking out or your child is consistently breaking out in hives after eating foods with red dye, that's likely the culprit and food and drinks with red dye should be avoided in the future. If it's hard to pinpoint what is causing your allergic response, I'd recommend seeing an allergist for further evaluation. For example, some children and adults can develop hives after taking liquid ibuprofen or acetaminophen, and some brands contain FD&C red number 40. Could it be the dye they're allergic to or the active ingredient, acetaminophen or ibuprofen? Sometimes it's hard to say, so we'd say it's best to avoid altogether. In some cases, we may have a family give a non-dye version in a controlled setting like at home to make sure there is not a repeat reaction. If there's no repeat reaction, this would mean that they were allergic to the dye. When looking at allergies to liquid acetaminophen or ibuprofen, most likely they're allergic to the active ingredient because red dye is in a lot of various products besides these medications, and they would have likely had a reaction to something else with red dye in it. Let's pivot to a different kind of red dye called red 30 or erythrocene. Its use is controversial due to concerns about cancer. A study in the 1980s showed that male rats given RED3 had an increased risk of thyroid tumors. Based on those studies, the FDA issued a partial ban on RED3 in 1990. After reviewing the research, the FDA determined that thyroid tumors were not directly caused by RED3 and the ban was removed. There have been short-term studies done on humans that have showed no effect on thyroid function. And the study done on rats used doses at least 60-fold higher than the levels studied in humans. Although studies have shown no clear evidence that red dye causes cancer, it's important to note that studies on food dye consumption by humans are difficult to do well. In the past, combinations of food dyes have often been studied together, making it difficult to determine if one in particular is causing certain effects. Also, many studies have been limited in their ability to monitor long-term effects. That being said, with all the evidence we have today, the FDA still deems red food dye to be safe for consumption and further studies are ongoing. Red 3 is also controversial and often in the news because it is banned to be used in cosmetics but approved in food and supplements. This has caused substantial confusion as to why something can be safely consumed but be unsafe to use on the skin. It appears that this all happened because of the timing of the approvals. The list of color additives the FDA approves for use in foods, supplements, and ingested medications is separate from the list for cosmetics and topical medications or medicine you apply to the skin. The agency has already approved the additive for use in foods and supplements before the study from the 1980s came out. When the study came out showing RED3 possibly causing the thyroid problems, it had not yet been approved for cosmetic use. So due to the current concerns, it was banned in use in cosmetics. The FDA then further reviewed the research and determined RED3 to be safe for consumption, but never updated its approval for cosmetic use. Still, many people are concerned about this discrepancy and wish to avoid RED dye entirely. In the United States, RED3 has mostly been replaced in foods and drinks by RED40, but is still used in maraschino cherries, candies, and some popsicles. Despite all the circulating concerns, with all the evidence at hand, the FDA and World Health Organization have deemed red dye to be safe for consumption. They have placed an acceptable daily intake of 3.2 milligrams per pound, 7 milligrams per kilogram. 
One study showed that children aged 2 to 5 had the highest average daily intake of Red Dye 40 at 0 0.09 milligram per pound of body weight. That's 35 times less than the recommended limit. This shows you that they are very unlikely to consume enough red dye to go over the set daily limit. As long as you're not consuming bottles of Gatorade, bags of gummy snacks, and cartons of flavored milk with red dye in one sitting, you're unlikely to exceed that approved limit. In summary, the evidence supports that small amounts of red dye are unlikely to affect overall health. When consumed in moderation, red dye has not clearly linked to cancer. And although certain individuals with ADHD may see mild symptom improvement with eliminating red food, red food dye does not cause ADHD and other strategies are more likely to help manage symptoms, specifically medication and behavioral therapy. It's best to limit artificial processed foods when able, not only due to the presence of food dyes, but also due to their overall lack of nutrition and higher levels of added sugar. I personally love gummy bears right now, and it's okay to enjoy your favorite fruit drink or flavored candy now and again. But these foods are not the mainstay of my diet, just like I don't want packaged foods to be the mainstay of our children's diet. It is in conjunction with fresh foods, and this is what moderation means. I don't panic when my son has food dyes at school, birthday parties, or perhaps we bring it into our home occasionally, but it's a portion of his diet and not the mainstay. I understand that focusing on whole fresh foods is not always possible, whether from time constraints, money limitations, or other variables, maybe your child just doesn't like the fresh foods because they're selective, and this is okay. Give yourself some grace and do the best that you can with the resources you have available. Look at the big picture of your child's intake preferences without guilt. And remember, if your child does have ADHD, treat this like how I approach lactose intolerance. Some people just cannot have dairy products or maybe perhaps a certain quantity of dairy products. It makes their stomach hurt or makes them uneasy. Regardless of where they have this milk, parties or at home, different situations, they are impacted. If you feel your child has foods with red food dye in various locations and you see an exacerbation of symptoms at school, home, parties, everywhere, different situations, you can absolutely make the decision to limit these products based on correlation that you're seeing. This decision is yours based on your child and what they will eat. I hope you found this video helpful and it helped you feel a little less stressed about red food dye. Please leave questions or comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and share this video on social media or with a friend because that's how this channel continues to grow. And make sure to subscribe to be the first to know about new videos published. I'll see you all next week for another video here on Peds Doc Talk TV. Stay well.